Yo, what's going on guys? Jared here. Today I want to talk about Eldwitch and Eldwitch Runic specifically. Um, so if you guys remember back at YCS Philly, I actually played a variant of this deck for very specific reasons of how all of the other decks were being played. When I say that, things like Triple Tactics Thrust, Harpy's Feather Duster, and Lightning Storm were extremely popular, and Destruction was also very popular. Things like Unchained Abomination, um, Abominable Soul I believe it's called. Um, just things that destroy uh, is the main main thing here So the reason why this deck works in my opinion right now is because you are able to set up very heavy strong interruption boards that your opponent is forced to play through because not a lot of decks have natural back or removal and you can use your interruptions where you want them to and then punish them stop them and then take control of the game from there with your Eld strong Eldwitch cards and um, other forms of interruption that you are going to establish. Now, I will say that there is going to be another variant of this deck that you can play when I say the words Runic Eldwitch. There is definitely a more runic -y version of it that can exist. Um, this is not that variant. This is more similar to my YCS Philly list, as you'll see, where it is just playing the six Runic cards, but those cards add a massive amount of versatility into it. And I really, really wanted to show it to you guys because right now I think it is very well positioned because of the way side deck patterns are happening right now. So... Without further ado, let's just jump into it, and please subscribe if you enjoy. Okay guys, so here is the deck list. I have this kind of sectioned off in ways, so it's easier for me to explain it. And um, I'm just going to go through a card by card and kind of explain why the reasons that stuff is here. Um, so first of all, these six pot cards I think are very important because they help dig into both your engine um, and non-engine and side deck. All of those things are extremely very important. Pot of Prosperity being able to do it, and then Duality kind of being like a mini version of being able to do it, just with more restrictions. Um, both are obviously insanely strong, and they fix your hands extremely well. Has a lot of consistency of these being in here. The only issue with these cards is that they kind of play in the draw and lockbird a little bit, but no other cards in this deck really play in the draw and lockbird. So um, if they draw here, it's kind of a minus one, and that's kind of the whole aspect of this deck, right? With the way that people and other YouTubers and pro players have been assessing the format, um, hand traps seem to be dominant. It seems to be Droll, Nibiru, Valor, Imperm, Ash Blossom, everywhere. Those seems to be all over in the deck list currently. And because of this, you are able to play a deck like Eldwitch um, that is very heavily trap reliant. Things like Labyrinth could also succeed here, um, but they was, that loses more to stuff like Ash, like heavier. And in this scenario, we are actually able to take advantage of giving your opponent dead cards just from the start of their deck building process. So if your opponent opens up things like Droll, Nibiru, Veil, or Imperm, um, they're already behind in the game just because they put those cards in the main their main deck, which isn't wrong, right? But you need to be one step ahead at an event or your locals or a regional or a YCS um, so that you are already ahead in that game. So that is kind of the uh, reason for this existing along with the Lightning Storm Triple Tactics Thrust uh, package, be side deck package being used right now. Um, so yeah, six pot cards, consistency. Um, I actually wanted to go into more of the non-engine first because I think that's where more of the interesting stuff lies. Um, Dalmatica Punishment is in here as a plus one. Um, in every scenario, this card is, seems to always be good. Being able to either draw a card, pop an additional card, um, both of those are really, really important. And um, in a slower game state, it can really make a big, big difference. You might want to add more th like uh, more Garuas in here or maybe other uh, targets for Punishment, but because this is the only card in here, I'm not using a lot of them like it like, even in the later stages of the game if the game continues for that long punishment being a one for one is still fine it's not like the end of the world right like it's not like so bad if you have to send just to, like a chaos angel right it's just like okay sure my punishment was a one for one it's not it's it's still fine it's still an interruption it's not like the card's dead so um it's yeah, it's still really really good um skill drain i'm actually gonna put tikaboo with skill drain here um because these two uh, floodgates right now um, are the only two that actually hit the variety of decks that are currently in the format. And when I say that, we're talking about things like Rescue Ace, Infernoble, uh, Pearly, uh, Men Menadium. There's so many decks right now, Unchained, that these two cards are the two cards that actually add value to what you are doing. Now, obviously, Unchained is the kind of outlier here because that deck can play around Floodgates more, and that's also why this deck isn't as floodgate as um as it used to be with more Floodgates in it, because before you could play both, like, Rivalry End goes in in this deck, and it would still function perfectly fine. There would be some kind of, in like, um kind of issue sometimes, even with Tikaboo, um, you can't, like, do the Eldwitch stuff as much, but you are able to subsidize it because they can't play either, and you're just, you're, the rest of your deck still works. Um, but 
The point is that these two floodgates hurt the most things in this very wide format. That's the most important thing here, and you have to think about that when you're deck building. Um, in formats like this, uh, you don't want to put cards that are completely useless in certain matchups and, uh, like, good or super favorable in others because, like, you're just dice rolling an event when you could just have, like, the average good card in here, which these both happen to be, Skill Drain and Tikaboo. Even against Unchained, they are still somewhat impactful. Um, Salm Strike is in here now, along with Torrential Tribute. Both of these cards are high impact and trade extremely well into a lot of different things. They're also very good at board breakers to help going second. So if you are, obviously this deck is preferably going first, but if you do go second, all of the trap cards um, literally do something going second. You are able to flip them, interact with your opponent. They cannot OTK you. It's to be very difficult. Um, and you're going to make it very, very hard for them. And you are, you are pretty much putting them on play perfectly. And a lot of current Yu-Gi-Oh players with trap decks um, falter in a lot of ways because they're not used to these types of cards like Solemn Strike, Compulse, Torrential, even Punishment as these single interaction type cards. And you can hit certain uh, certain cards in their line of play. And they not, might not be able to solve certain puzzles to be able to either find lethal on you if they can, or um, even just make a good board at all that you can just easily break the following turn. So uh, a lot of players right now just cannot figure that out. And I think it's something that is punishable very easily right now as well. And some decks are just all indexed too, like Manadium and Infernoble. You torrential them like way in their combo, they're done. Like it's over. <laughs> it's just over. You get so much value out of this card sometimes. Um, so yeah, uh, and Strike also is protects you from some, like the only useful hand trap being Ash Blossom pretty much. So this also protects you for that. And negating the summon can also be very useful in certain matchups too. Um, Compulse is in here right now. Again, going second as it trades. This could be a lot of different things. I'm not really sold on Compulse yet, but I think it's also strong enough to where it, it kind of warrants it being here. I didn't want it to be more engine because actually the weakest part of this deck is your engine, your main engine. Um, if you see too many of them, you will just lose because the uh, they're just so outdated cards. So you need the more unfair cards that have been printed or are overpowered. Um, to be able to carry you and let the the broken part of the Eldritch engine, which is its recovery and always being able to cycle through itself, um, really take effect. So because of that, we have this uh, something like a pulse in here that's just very free reign, very free play. This could be a lot of different stuff. You could also put freezing curses in here if you wanted to, but I wanted something that was removal. I want to be able to get rid of things. So for now, it's compulse. Um, Terrors of the Overroot, I think it's called, is also an okay option, but again, it's up to you. Whatever you want to put in this slot, feel free. Um, six runic cards, three tip, three uh, flashing fire. I've explained this in my YCS Philly build, but for anyone who's new here, new here, the runic cards add a very nice utility package in here where you don't feel threatened by things like Lightning Storm and the Harvey Slayer Duster that came off the ban list, um, which a lot of people are playing because of Triple Tactics Thrust. Because of this, you are able to establish a like a five set card back row, and if they activate something like Duster, you can just chain uh, one of the runic cards to Special Summon Hugin, and then the Hugin can protect your back row, and it, no, no, nothing. it was like Judgment, but you didn't pay half your life points, right? Um, it's the same result, and they can't chain anything like uh, to the Hugin itself, so if they have like Imperm or Valor, you know, anything like that, they still they can't interact with the Hugans, so it's just the special summoning of this. So um, they're very, very strong. As well as that, they can also double as interruptions. And what I mean by that, being able to um, add Flashing Fire, of course, this was really good in the format that I played it in, in the YCS, but also um, still now being have generic destruction, being able to chain to a Pearl Lily, being able to pop an Isolde, right? These are all um, very important aspects of decks that you are able to just like a on-spot removal is still really, really strong, and the same applies for Compulse in that reason. But um, also, we have Slefnir now. I don't think Slefnir existed yet when I played this deck at the YCS Philly, so um, this was a big, big bump in this card, in this deck's playability, because you are actually able to do some kind of cool things here with Slefnir, being able to actually get the token in your opponent's draw phase, uh, flip Tikaboo, and then um, uh, you have an Eldritch card that you summon, either it be go usually Golden Ward, right? So you would actually have Golden Ward, Slefnir, and the token, and then on your turn, you're actually able to turn all three of those all under Tikaboo into the uh, the Black Luster Soldier, which is very nice. I think it just adds a nice little layer of diversity um, into the deck, as well as something like SP Little Knight and Blink Spider. Both of these cards add a lot of uh, versatility into the plays, even without a battle phase now too, which is very, very nice. Um, so yeah, and then lastly, I want to get into the actual Eldwitch engine itself. Oh, uh, also for the Runic package before I forget, um, they, it was like the utility of being able to not just summon Hugin and Slefnir, um, 
moon in is just in here if you're at a tournament just keep in mind time is a thing um don't slow play don't like be that guy um but like it, it's important to have a aspect in your deck that is prepared for situation because so, you are playing a slower deck so sometimes you're going to go to time but just don't you know don't be that guy you know what i mean like be be, be good people um, also, uh, Freki is in here to be able to go into Chaos Angel with any of the, uh, Hikaro or Conquistador. This actually gives you a full Chaos Angel, which can be very annoying and is also unexpected for a lot of people. So just keep that in mind. In the side deck, I have stuff in here that you can play. Gozen and Rivalry are not good in all matchups right now because of the wide format. So as I said, I have them in the side deck for now. And if you want to play them, you can, um, feel free, depending on what your local scenes may be. It's a good option to have. Uh, Sphere Mode and Lava Golem. At the YCS, I played both of these, even with Duality and Lava Golem. It was still fine. Um, just the high value of an impact of this card and going second with some formats, you really, really need it. Um, right now, it might not be as impactful, but with stuff like Infernoble, um, both of these cards can come up very, very heavily. Maybe Super Poly could have a, a place in here, possibly, um, but that would definitely be um, against Duality. Again, like you're going to have to finagle it a little bit. This side deck is kind of more of like a recommendation from me and just things that you can put in here. Um, I'm also a big fan of Inspector Border in this deck, strictly because um, a lot of people are going to be signing out things like Imperm, Droplets, Book of Moons, anything like that. Um, they're going to be signing that out. So uh, Inspector Border actually can kind of run free games two and three if they're not expecting it. And uh, being able to just summon it and it's stick and then your opponent can't play the game um, is very, very good. So just something to keep in mind that you can kind of like uh, preemptively mind game your opponent with this card. Moving on to the extra deck, uh, we have the uh, targets for the Punishment, which is two Entists, the Garura, and the uh, bigger thing to send Garura. <laughs> um, that's pretty much it for the those targets. Right now, you might be able to switch one of the Entists for a Garura because a lot of the cards that you're gonna that you want to be popping are um, smaller. Like there's a lot of small cards that you want to destroy. Um, things like Isolde, things like the Pearly uh, monsters. So maybe a uh, Garura. You might not need Entists. Maybe you just want Garura. So you know whatever you kind of need to do just something to keep in mind uh for the runic cards we have one frecky two hugan one moonin and one slefnir i used to have three hugan in here if you find that you the third one's coming up for protection purposes um put it back in by all means i have like no like it completely makes sense it just depends on how much people are like how much hate people have and from what i'm noticing from trends that i'm picking up online that you all have access to too as you see these deck lists come out um they're not playing a lot of backer removal and i think that's you don't need three Hugan right now, but maybe as if more back row decks pick up, um, you might need to play three Hugan again. Um, and then for the only synchro is Chaos Angel, just because you can, don't have to use any tuners. Um, you could just use, like I said, Runic plus Conquistador Hikaro, or, you know, two, two of these still make it just for the banish. Um, it's still really important and very good. This card just really, really strong. Uh, Palady, same thing. You can make it with uh, Kiro and Conquistador. And this card being a quick effect bounce, quick effect compulsion is very, very strong. And again, games two and three, if they're not, if they're signing out droplets and stuff and imperms, um, the Palades gets way scarier, right? They're not engines, not meant to deal with this. So you just have it sitting there and it can just run wild. Um, a lot of people forget about it. The other XC that plays is uh, Typhon. This is another card where if you don't have duality, but you have a runic card going second, or you have two runic cards going second, you can use a runic card to pop a card, and then use the other runic card to summon one from extra deck, and then you are able to just slap a Typhon on top of it, and then just use the Typhon to spin, and you can still lock out things that are 3,000 or bigger. So um, it's really, really strong right now. Um, and then Blackbuster Soldier, we already went over. Very, very strong card. SP Little Knight. Again, I, this card is just, like, its utility is amazing. It's so good. If you don't have it, it's fine. Like, it's not a big deal. Again, I cannot stress that enough. Like, if you're playing, like, there's no YCS is coming up. If you're playing at a local or regional level, you don't need this card. You can play something like Nightmare Phoenix. This is not going to come up a lot. Um, it, should it be in here? Yeah, I feel like, but I also feel like it should be in every deck. So it's it's not, I, I don't know, man. Like, if it's out of your budget, don't don't get it right now. In my, in my personal opinion, there's no major events where I feel like you, it's warranted to need to get this card. But this card is that good. This card's utility is outstanding, um, like no other wing two that we've ever had before. Multiple interruptions in a card. You make it there. It's just so good in every way of the of the game. This card is so good. Um, link Spider being able to link off these two and then going into an SP, um, but just mainly just being able to link off these two is pretty important. Um, so yeah, that is the whole deck and the explanation behind it. I think this deck punishes a lot of the meta trends that are happening right now, as I feel most of the, I usually say that when, um, when it applies here, a lot of it's what I play at events is stuff like this, where I'm like 
shifting towards how the meta is going and then just going against it to punish it. So this would be one of those examples right now, in my opinion, where it actually um, is applicable. So I, overall, I hope you guys enjoyed the deck profile and the explanations. And if you did, please subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. And let me know what you would think, what you would play right now down in the comments. There is so many decks right now that you can play. And I want to know what you are playing because there is so many things. So again, hope you enjoyed and have a nice day.